Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, if that's when you're listening. Uh, welcome to another lesson. My name, if I don't teach you, is Mr. Macaline and Marx, but Sir is fine. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at gravitational fields and weight. So what I want you to do is make sure that A, you have a pen and paper ready, because I want you to make some notes and attempt some questions as we go. Make sure you can hear me clearly so you're somewhere that's not too loud. And I want you to be ready to learn because I'm going to try and make this as interesting and, well, it's always interesting, but as interactive as I can. So what you'll first notice is here there are 10 different words. Kilograms, grams, tons, millinewtons, ounces, stones, pounds, milligrams, kilonewtons, and newtons. So what I'd like you to do is tell me which ones are masses and which ones are weights. So, very quickly, uh, pause the video if you want. I'm going to move on now, but do make sure you at least have a go at that. So, the weights, the only three are the ones with Newtons in, because weight is always a force, and all forces, no matter what, are measured in Newtons. So that means all of these are just various different ways of measuring mass. They're used at different scales of size. So, for instance, tons. You're not liable or likely to measure M&Ms in tons unless you have a serious problem uh, eating m and uh, Milli means a thousand times smaller, as in uh, you take a newton, you divide it by a thousand, and that is a millinewton. So that's what it means. So it takes a thousand millinewtons to make one newton, or one newton is 1,000 millinewtons. But we'll do more conversion stuff, don't worry. Kilo means a thousand times bigger. So you might have heard of kilometer. Anytime you see kilo in front of a word, it means a thousand or a kilogram bag is a thousand gram bag of sugar, for example. Uh, force is measured in newtons. So all of these are terms which you're hoping you're kind of used to. Uh, and you may use stones or kilograms kind of interchangeably. They're on the same scale. It just depends whether it's a more archaic way of measuring weight and mass. So you see there, actually, that brings up a very good point. In normal conversation, we actually misuse the word weight. So you'll notice then I actually said stones and kilograms, an archaic way of measuring your weight. Now, you do measure your weight in stone, but it's actually your mass. That's where science and the English language don't agree. We use the word mass and weight incorrectly in daily life. So I want you just to be very careful whenever you say something like that. So gravitational field is like a magnetic field, which I'm hoping all of you have heard of. Uh, all that happens is anything with mass. So me, uh, this hand sanitizer, that's topical, uh, the mouse I'm using. All of these things uh, have mass. And what that means is we have a gravitational field. Now, the bigger the mass, the bigger the gravitational field. However, until you get to this kind of size of a planet, you're not really going to notice the effects. So all that means is that while we have a gravitational field, I'm not about to throw this hand sanitizer bottle and find it starts orbiting me. OK, not unless my mass is much heavier than I'm thinking. Uh, the gravitational field strength for Earth, it's 10 is if it's rounded up. We use 9.8. OK. And all it means, as you can see there, it's all about the rate of acceleration because if you look meters per second squared so let me break that down so that's meters per second per second so all that means is you've got meters distance seconds time so it's distance over time over time well we all know that distance over time is speed so speed over time is acceleration it's the chain rate of change of speed Force of gravity, it pulls us towards the center of the Earth, okay? That's true of all forces of gravity. That's just how gravity works. It pulls you towards the center of whatever you're being attracted towards. That's why, you know, people on the bottom of the Earth don't fall off. And unfortunately, I can already hear some of you going, but sir, what if the Earth's flat? It's not. I'm sorry, it's just not. That's wrong. So, uh, attractive force between all objects, it's a non-contact force, because remember, non-contact forces are any forces 
which are to do with a field. So there's only three really, electrostatic, magnetic, gravitational. And here you can see that the dog and the cat are clearly attracted by gravity, although judging by the cat's face, I don't think they like each other. So small attractive force on the left for a mouse, a bigger attractive force for an elephant, however, still not really big enough to notice kind of on a, so there's two, there's macro and there's micro. Macro is like the big picture. Micro is when you really focus in on something. So in terms of macro, so if I drop my phone, if there's an elephant next to me and I drop my phone, it's not gonna fall to the side because there's an elephant there, okay? In re okay, in reality, it moves a tiny little bit more potentially, but it's not big enough to measure. Yeah, that's all I mean. So that's something to keep in mind, though, because it comes into play more when there's planets. For instance, some planets are much, much bigger than other planets. So here is Marge. I don't know what happened to her eye. I am very sorry. So the force of gravity on something is called its weight. Because it is a force, it is measured in Newtons. So very true. I agree. Uh, on Earth, my weight is around 560 Newtons, Marge says. So on Earth, gravity falls with a force of 10 Newtons for every kilogram. So again, we've rounded up there just at this point. We will be using 9.8 when we're doing exam questions, but I just want to make it easy to start with for you. So hopefully you can already tell me what her kilogram would be, uh, her mass would be in kilograms. So if her weight is 560 Newtons and you get pulled 10 Newtons for every kilogram of mass, then what would her mass be? Okay, it will be on the next slide. Have a think if you can write it down for me, and then you can always tick it on the next page just so that when you look back, you know, I knew that. So on the moon, gravity is smaller because the moon has smaller mass, which we'll get onto in a bit. So it was 56 kilograms. That means she's made up of 56 kilograms of blood, bones, hair, etc. So that's what, that's what your mass is. That's what's really hard to get and I'm really hoping you're grasping. Your mass is all the, your matter, it's the stuff you're made of, yeah? So every little atom all added together, everything you are is your mass. So no matter where you are, as long as you are you, your mass will stay the same. That's the important part, okay? The only way to remove your mass is if you lose something. So if I cut off my hand, then my mass will go down. So on the moon, her, her mass won't change because as I said, it's still, she's still exactly the same but she only weighs 93.3 Newtons, okay? So what you can see there is the, the accelerator, there's not even two Newtons per kilogram on the moon, yeah? So that's what it means. That's what it means when it says that you're, you weigh less elsewhere, but your mass is the same. So recall check. Uh, I will ask you to pause the video here, okay? So uh, I'll wait. 30 seconds, let me just load up my phone. Uh, I will give you a 30 second timer. And then after that, you hopefully have paused and had a go at the questions. So when the timer goes off, I'm about to change onto the, you're about to move forward in slides. So make sure you've paused it before then, okay? So just have a go at those. So what does milli mean? What does kilo mean? How many newtons in a kil kilonewton, in a millinewton? What's bigger? What's force measured in? What can mass be measured in? And what do we measure mass uh, in in physics? So what do we normally use? What's, it's called an SI unit, but you'll learn about that later. So what would you expect to see? Okay, so. All right, then make sure you put and answers. So milli means one thousandth. Kilo means thousand. Okay. Uh, how many newtons in a kilonewton? There are one thousand. How many newtons in a millinewton? 0 0.001. Can you see that? It's a thousand just flipped. Yeah. And remember, you always put the decimal place after the first zero. Okay. It's a really easy way to flip. Uh, what's bigger? Obviously, a kilonewton. Uh, what's force measured in newtons? How can mass be measured? Stones, pounds, kilograms, grams. What do you measure mass in in physics? It's kilograms. It will almost always be kilograms. That's what they want. Yeah. Because it's just the easiest. Uh, it's the reason as well we use. Uh, grams, kilograms instead of stones and pounds. I don't know about you. Um, I still forget half the time how many ounces in a pound in a stone, the conversions. It's much easier to just have lots of 
1000 to work with. So what I want you to do is I will put this link uh, in the description below. Uh, we'll, I want you to go away, pause this video. So open this one in a new tab. Uh, the mark at the moment is 10 minutes 16. So you can always come back to that time in this video if you lose it. So watch this and then go on to the next slide for me. So it's all about the moon landing. So uh, I'll briefly talk about the last slide because I'm hoping you've watched the video now. It's amazing. It's am first of all, it's amazing, amazing that we made it to the moon and the technology we had, kind of the the whole mission, their their spaceship, uh, a calculator that we have at school, or definitely a phone you've got nearby, are so much more advanced. And doesn't that blow your mind? How much better technology is now that, uh, that you're listening to me now that you can see me on your screen and we've recorded this video and i've uploaded it so all of you can see that that you know it, it's amazing and the quality of it um what you should have noticed was that he was bouncing and the reason he was bouncing is because remember when we talked about marge uh the force of gravity on the moon is less than two newtons uh, for every kilogram so what that means is that they're Kind of roughly five, if we're being very rough, it's not exactly five, five times lighter. It feels like your mass is five times less. In reality, it's not. That's just the force is five times less. So what that means is, whereas normally you take a step, suddenly you're throwing yourself off the ground in tiny little increments because your muscles are just not adapted for that really, really small uh, gravitational field. So it's very hard not to over move because every little movement your body you're trained to subconsciously exert you you don't think oh i want to lift myself off the chair i'll apply 200 newton no you just do it because it's all done in your head in reality those calculations are done because physics is everywhere but you don't do it in your head yeah so the equation we use is weight equals mass times gravitational field strength so make sure you write that down for me because that's a super duper important equation uh, the equation triangle, because I know quite a few people are quite partial to an equation triangle. I myself think they're rather nice. And there are key definitions. Again, I've said it multiple times. The reason I've said it multiple times is because we still get it wrong all the time. I still get it wrong all the time. I still I still go and weigh myself instead of mass myself. But that's probably just because it sounds weird. So mass is the amount of stuff that makes something up. Your individual parts, what you're made of. Weight is the force pulling you down as well. Lots of people on Google Classrooms, which you should go check, uh, use Google Classrooms. They get it wrong sometimes because it's really hard to figure out. So when it says, what's the force? Gravity isn't a force. It's a field. Weight is the force. Okay. So make sure you got that down. I'm moving on. Who was paying attention? Were you paying attention? Did you make those notes? I asked you to. Could you tell me right now everything that's underneath these? I hope so. So I'll go through very quickly. All stuff you've seen before. If you didn't have those down, pause the video now and get them down. Okay, it's important. So now what I want you to do is try and fill these in. So pause it. You have five seconds to pause. So in five, four, three, two, one, I'm moving on to the answer. So it's a force, measured in Newton, caused by gravity. It's a pulling down towards the center of an object. Uh, without gravity, there is no weight. Our weight changes with gravity. Mass, same again. Five, four, three, two, one. And better have paused it. Answers the amount of material, the particles it's made of, measured in kilograms, doesn't depend on gravity. We have the same mass on the moon and the earth even though they have different gravitational fields okay really important so here why does the astronaut on the moon have the same mass but different we've talked about this multiple times you can just see here it's much clearer so here you can see 1200 newtons on earth 200 newtons on the moon so that's six times less okay these are rough numbers but it's just to give you the example that's why they jump like that okay because the gravitational field is smaller on the moon because the mass of the moon is smaller. So 
Here it is. Weight. Weight is mass times gravity. Mass. Weight divided by gravity. And gravitational field strength, which is the which is the long version of G. But gravity for now is fine. Don't worry. Is weight over mass. So what I want you to do is I will pause it again. I'm going to while I'm explain. Uh, listen to me explain first. Then I'll give you 20 seconds to pause it and have a go at these, and then resume. Uh, your weight is different on each planet because they have different gravitational fields. So what I need to do is hopefully you've got some bathroom scales or something at home uh, to measure your mass. Remember it's your mass because we're doing it in kilograms. So measure your mass in kilograms and then put it into a table like this in your work and then calculate your weight. And what we'll do, Google Classroom, wonderful thing. Uh, I'll be uploading an assignment for this week. If you join me on Google Classroom, which there'll be a link to below, then what you can do is reply to the assignment, and there'll be a worksheet, and you can add images. So if you take a, a picture of all the work you've done today, then you can send it to me and I can mark it for you. So I can look at this and go, hmm, yes, yes, very good. They got this right, okay? So that's what we're trying to get from this. So get your mass, get your weight. How'd you do it? Weight is mass times gravitational field strength which is the gravitational pull, okay? So for instance, giving you a freebie, because I'm so nice, uh, if the mass was 90 kilograms, I wish, then the gravitational pull would be 900 newtons, okay? So I'm gonna give you 10 seconds now, so 10, nine, eight, seven, six, better pause, five, four, three, two, one, and moving on. So what happened to your mass as you moved from one planet to another? Write that down for me. On which planet did you weigh the most? That should be the same for all of you. On which planet did you weigh the least? Should be the same for all of you. On which planet was your waist, uh, weight most similar to your weight on Earth? Hmm. I don't know. You'll have to find out. And imagine you went to Saturn, write a short story about a day in your life there, include details about how your uh, different weight affected what you did. Okay, so Saturn, whatever your weight was, was it more, was it less? I don't know. I know what it should be. Um, I want you to tell me, just pretend, pretend. So, oh, I went to answer my phone, but as I lifted it to my ear, whoosh, I threw it. I went to get out of my chair, but as I pushed off my chair, I hit the ceiling. It's up to you. Or perhaps it was heavier. I went to lift my phone, ah, and I sprained my wrist. I went to push myself off the chair. And I broke my elbow. It's up to you. Just tell me, tell me what you struggled with. Tell me what was easier. You know, you, it doesn't have to be satin. If you'd rather do one that's a bit funnier, hint, hint, you probably weighed more. Then uh, you could do the moon if you want. Just something. Uh, another video in the comment below. So this will be video two. Uh, and then I want you to answer these questions. So how is the vacuum made in the chamber? Uh, when the ball and feather are dropped for the first time, what happens to them? Why did it happen? Can you draw a force diagram? Ooh. Uh, how long does it take to remove all of the air from the chamber? Very interesting. What happens to the ball and feather once they're released after the air is removed? Why does it do this? And can you draw a force diagram to show that? So uh, all of those things are answerable. Answerable? You can find the answers in the video. That's what I mean. Uh, moving on in five, four, better pause it to have a go at that. Three, two, one. Oh, 18 minute 50 five at the moment in case you need the timestamp for coming back so the answers they pumped all the air out they sucked it uh the feather fell slower than the ball which you were probably expecting because the feather had more air resistance which has a larger surface area it's like a parachute yeah here's the example you see the arrows are bigger how long did it take to remove all the air about three hours they said uh, what happened? They fell at the same time. Now, I know they, they were kind of playing it up a bit, but it, it's, it's amazing, isn't it, that we can do that, that we can prove it, that if you drop a bowling ball and a feather at the same time, they fall at the same rate. Just, just think about that. Like, that's mad. Yeah? It's, it's just the air. Uh, and why does it do it? Because they've got the same force of gravity. Yeah? So remember, it's the force down is uh, it's all about it weighing based on the mass. So weight is mass times gravitational field strength. 
but the acceleration, do you remember I said that we did at the start, acceleration is the same. So it's 9.8 or 10 if we round up. It's 10 newtons per kilogram. But it's also 10 meters per second squared. Do you remember seeing that at the start? So what that means is that the acceleration is every second it gets 10 meters per second faster. Like that first graph that was uh, up the top here. So it's the same for everything, everything. And it's just the air resistance that has an effect. Isn't that amazing? I, I think it's amazing and I hope you do too. Uh, and then obviously here, there's just no air resistance. So the downward arrow is the same. Uh, think about all the forces you've interacted with so far today and write me a paragraph to tell me. Uh, for instance, uh, what forces have I interacted with? Uh, I got out of bed, so I resisted weight. Remember, it's weight, not gravity is the force. Uh, I opened the fridge door, uh, which of course is a, a magnet. I think that's how it works. Um, pulling against the magnet, it's a pull. Um, turn on the shower. I mean, you can write whatever you like, but I like, for instance, it's raining now. Uh, it's probably a storm where you are as well at some point recently. And I love, I just love thinking about, you, you, I'm a nerd. Um, I was thinking about the forces, the, si the science of all that. That's it. Science is really cool and interesting. And the reason it's so interesting is because it's everything. Yeah, especially physics, because physics is the best. So right now it's raining. So I'm thinking, hmm, I know the gravitational field strength. Now it's different higher up slightly, it gets weaker, but I know the rough, 9.8. So I know that when that rain in that cloud starts falling, it's accelerating 9.8 meters per second every second. So I wonder, hmm, how high is that cloud? And what speed was it, uh, the rain, when it hit the top of the conservatory? Now, did it reach terminal velocity? Did, could it get any faster? What was its shape? Uh, all of these things. Then it hit the roof of the conservatory and I can hear it. That. So now I think, well, if it hit the roof of the conservatory, all of that kinetic energy, that moving energy, was instantly transformed into another kind of energy, wasn't it? The sound. Now, if you knew the numbers, if I knew exactly how to measure everything in the world at once, I could tell you how loud that raindrop would be when it was up in the cloud. Because I could tell you how the energy would convert. Now, isn't that amazing that it all works, that the, num the numbers just don't lie, the numbers work. OK, when you get to space and stuff, a bit scary, a bit weird, a bit too big. But just in terms of what we know about the world, the world around us, it works. Yeah, it's our best guess. It doesn't work exactly and we can't get it right to kind of eight decimal places. But isn't it amazing that we know all this stuff? Hmm? So, fun note to end on. Uh, here, that number there, one point. 2 times 10 to the 44 newton okay just just absorb how ridiculously big that number is okay so for instance uh if i weigh 100 kilograms i'm a thousand newtons okay that's how much the force i feel off the earth is uh so a thousand is one times 10 to the three so all I've got to do is try and imagine what that, if I, so if I times that by 10, and then I times it by 10, and I times it by 10, 31 times, I get to about the same number. That's, you can't even imagine it. That's how big it is. And that is the force uh, experienced kind of constantly around a black hole. It doesn't change. Now, isn't that amazing? It doesn't change based on their size or mass. That's why physics kind of breaks down around black holes. We do, do Classical physics, as we know it, as I can teach you in school, doesn't apply. We have to go into something else, but you don't learn about that at school, but because it's quite complicated. But it's amazing, isn't it? Just look at that force. Just think, you can't even imagine. And that's why I love physics, okay? And that's why I want you to love physics, because I want you guys to feel that same wonder I do when I think about stuff like this. I want you to really go, okay? And that's it. And I'm hoping you do appreciate kind of the science of the world around you. You do get interested in that stuff around you. So, 
Uh, I'm pretty much ending here. Uh, there's links below to the first video, the second video, and Google Classroom, which you should join. Wonderful platform. I love Google Classroom. You should join me so I can talk to you and mark your work and give you feedback. Wonderful. Um, join Google Classroom. But also, I just want you to say, you know, have a good day. So it's Mr. Macalina Marks, it's me signing out. Uh, have a good day. Be safe. Be lucky. And be proud of yourselves. Okay? We're all, all doing the best we can. And I'm glad that you're here trying to learn. Okay? So be proud of yourselves. Take care.